Imagine a world where 85% of all life just vanishes. Sounds like a sci-fi movie plot, right? But this actually happened here on Earth hundreds of millions of years ago. Buckle up as we journey back in time to the Ordovician Silurian extinction, the first mass wipeout on Earth, and unravel the intriguing tale of how our planet bounced back from this colossal setback. Ready for a wild ride through history? Let's go! What was the Ordovician Silurian extinction? Let's journey back in time, far, far back to around 445.2 to 440.8 million years ago. This period is known as the Hernantian Age of the Ordovician and the following Redanian Age of the Silurian. So in this chunk of time, a huge wipeout happened. Can you wrap your head around this? The majority of all life during the Ordovician period was simply wiped out. Just to put it into perspective, this was like the second biggest game over moment for life on Earth. There's only one that beats it, and that infamous one happened at the end of the Permian and Triassic periods. Hence, the extinction event during the Hernantian and Redanian ages was a major catastrophe with big impacts on life. The extinction event hit hard, affecting a wide range of organisms. One group that really felt the blow was the brachiopods, which are those shell-bearing creatures. Particularly the brachiopods living in the broad and shallow seas within and near the continent of Laurentia. Many of these brachiopods were unique to Laurentia, not found elsewhere. But after the extinction, the seas of Laurentia were repopulated by brachiopods that used to live on other continents. It's like a massive migration took place, with new brachiopod genera calling Laurentia their new home. The extinction seems to have happened in phases. Certain specialists propose that an initial phase transpired prior to the conclusion of the Ordovician period, which affected graptolites, brachiopods, and trilobites. This stage might have been set off by a decrease in carbon dioxide levels, leading to a worldwide cooling effect. Conversely, some say that the emergence of glaciers over regions of Gondwana, an ancient supercontinent, coupled with subsequent alterations in sea levels and ocean currents, had a significant part to play. It's like a domino effect, environmental disruptions triggering a chain of extinction. During the glaciation period, sea levels dropped, draining the large epicontinental seas and reducing habitats for many organisms. It was a challenging time for life that thrived in those settings. And interestingly, cool water brachiopods even made their way into tropical latitudes. Talk about a change in scenery. But there's more to it. With the backdrop of global warming and the melting of glaciers, sea levels started to rise once again, triggering another wave of extinction during the Silurian period. Basically, the Earth was going through a hard time and life was grappling to adapt to the rapid changes. It's akin to when you're overloaded with countless assignments from your teacher and you find yourself overwhelmed. But here's an interesting point to note. Unlike some other extinctions, this one wasn't caused by an asteroid strike. The primary cause, or most likely reason, was environmental shifts. But why did it happen? Well, transport yourself back about 445 million years to the conclusion of the Ordovician period. You're probably wondering what on earth could cause something like this. Well, scientists have long pondered this query, and guess what? They have yet to uncover a straightforward answer. It resembles a complex puzzle composed of multiple pieces, with each fragment representing diverse factors that contributed to this awe-inspiring event. Picture it as a blend of distinct ingredients wherein the secrets of Earth's ancient recipe gradually emerged through meticulous experimentation. First up, we have global cooling. The Earth's climate experienced a significant drop in temperature during the end of the Ordovician period. This icy shift could have contributed to the extinction by posing challenges for species accustomed to milder climates. Picture attempting to endure an environment that suddenly resembles a frosty wasteland when you're used to a serene tropical haven. Next, consider the issue of alterations in sea levels. As the Ordovician period drew to a close, sea levels experienced a steep decline. This sudden drop could have spelled disaster for marine creatures that flourished in shallow coastal waters. Imagine your beach house losing all its water, leaving you stranded and parched. But hold on, there's more to this tale. Lack of oxygen is another potential villain that may have wreaked havoc on marine life during this era. After all, oxygen plays a pivotal role in the survival of most organisms, particularly those dwelling underwater. If oxygen levels took a nosedive, it would have been a possible cause for the mass extinction. Can you imagine? You're going about your day and then you just can't breathe. However, these aren't the only conceivable scenarios. There are a few other assumptions that are at play here. 
Some scientists propose that large volcanic eruptions might have played a part in the extinction event. Visualize volcanoes erupting on a massive scale, ejecting greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, leading to global warming and ocean acidification. Such scenarios don't seem hospitable for marine life, right? Here's a crazy thought. What if an asteroid hit us? Yeah, just like the one that made the dinosaurs disappear. And here's another idea. Some brainy folks think a gamma ray burst from a faraway star might have caused this extinction. Picture a sudden blast of super strong radiation hitting Earth, but you can't actually see anything happening. It would have been a total disaster for everything living here. But honestly, we're still scratching our heads over this one. We don't really know what exactly caused the Ordovician Silurian extinction. It's all a bit of a mystery. It could have been a mix of these things, or maybe something else we haven't figured out yet. What we do know is that whatever happened changed life on Earth in a big way. Figuring out how this happened is really important because it can teach us how to stop something like this from happening again. So how did Earth recover from this event? First, let's imagine the scenario. The extinction event has wiped out a whopping 85% of the species on Earth, but somewhere life finds a way to breathe again. And as expected, because of the size of the catastrophe, it took millions of years to recover from it. After around 10 million years, signs of life began to emerge. New species of marine invertebrates started to appear, signaling that nature was taking its course. It's like the first green sprouts pushing through the scorched earth after a devastating wildfire. As time went on, about 20 million years after the extinction, the marine ecosystem had largely bounced back. The waters beamed with life once again, showing that resilience knows no bounds. And by the 30 million year mark, the diversity of marine life had even surpassed pre-extinction levels. Talk about a comeback! So what fueled this recovery? Well, a few key factors played a vital role. First things first, there were surviving species that managed to adapt to the new environmental conditions. These resilient survivors became the pioneers of the post-extinction world, setting the stage for the recovery of life. Then, the availability of new habitats and resources was crucial. The extinction event had opened up empty ecological niches and left behind unoccupied territories. This presented an opportunity for life to diversify and fill those vacant spaces. It's like a new neighborhood springing up in an empty lot, attracting all sorts of new residents. You know, something really fascinating happened during the Ordovician Silurian extinction. New species started emerging and diversifying, which brought about a huge transformation. It's amazing how evolution played a crucial role in helping organisms adapt to changing circumstances and come up with new survival strategies. It's almost like nature's own experimentation process, where the most successful approaches are passed down through generations, leading to a remarkable increase in biodiversity. These findings give us valuable insights into how life could recover after future mass extinctions. Although the recovery process takes a long time, spanning over significant periods, it's definitely possible for life to bounce back and even surpass the level seen before the extinction event. This really shows the incredible resilience and adaptability of living organisms. However, we should keep in mind that future mass extinctions might have even more severe consequences for life, potentially prolonging the recovery phase. Each extinction event is unique, and the interplay of various factors can shape how long it takes for life to recover. And that is all about the story of the Ordovician Silurian extinction, a chapter in Earth's history that completely changed the course of life. From devastation to resilience, this story serves as a constant reminder of the adaptability displayed by our planet and all of its inhabitants.